Something to keep in mind, Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades is a constantly updated game. It has received over 90 updates since its launch in 2016. Information found in this video may become outdated and no longer useful after future updates. Another thing to keep in mind, I am not a firearms expert, so I may use incorrect lingo and terminology. You'll probably know what I mean, so try not to blow me up in the comments about it. Look for the devs channel, Anton Hand, on YouTube to keep up to date with the progress of the game by watching his weekly devlogs. There will be timestamps in the description below, so you can skip to the relevant section if you're looking for something more specific, or you don't need help in the more basic aspects of the game. The game was developed primarily with the Vive controllers. It basically supports all major controllers, but I will be showing the Vive controllers because they are simple and contain all the bare minimum inputs to play the game. The major inputs are the trigger, the trackpad, the menu button, and the grip button. These controls map pretty simply to other controllers. Pause the video on your controller to see how they map to the basic Vive controls that I will be showing and referring to in the video ahead. If your controller doesn't have a trackpad, you'll use the analog stick for most firearm interactions and manipulations. The same motions, but pushing in the stick instead of pressing down on the touchpad. The Vive touchpad has a very physical click when pressed down. The index is a bit more mushy, so you may have to get used to how much you have to press to activate. There are some other differences between the controllers and how they function in-game, but we will touch upon those later when we get to input options. But for the most common interactions, these simple inputs are what we're going to be talking about. Now, let's get started in-game. The sampler platter is a good place to start. However, it isn't fully up to date, and it doesn't tell you about all the features in the game. Still, by following the signs and going to each station, the panels will teach you how to use many specific items. It is a good scene to visit after watching this video. On the back side of your controller is the wrist menu. The wrist menu allows you to access several important options. Point your controller at the menu, press the trigger to select an option. The top left and right offer a quick turn in case your current movement type doesn't support them natively. Below that you will find options to quickly change your movement type. We will go into more detail about the options about these later. There are several cleanup features where you can quickly clean up empty magazines, all magazines, or all guns and melee weapons in a scene to help performance, or simply clean up some mess. Below that is the reload scene option which allows you to reload the current map that you're in. And below that, return to main menu, which brings you back to this scene, where you first load the game, and select other scenes. The wrist menu also allows you to quickly see what object you're holding. And finally, you can spawn the options panel. Here you will have access to many more settings. Press the lock in the corner to lock the position of the options menu when you let go or simply hold it in one hand while you navigate the menu. The main menu scene has a larger options menu available right when you start. Like using the wrist menu, simply point at the menu and the trigger button to select your option. Also in the main menu scene is the scene selection wall. Here, like other menus, point with your controller and pull the trigger to select a scene. Then on the panel in front of you, select load scene. The item spawner is available in most scenes, and allows you to spawn any weapon, knife, or tippy toy you want. When you spawn a weapon, there will often be an instructional panel above the spawner. However, these are usually generic to firearm types, and sometimes don't tell you the full functionality of every weapon. Grabbing the green arrow in the corner will allow you to adjust the height of the table until you're comfortable. There are a lot of things available in the spawner, and I recommend fooling around in it and seeing all that is available. We'll go over some of the options in the options panel real quick. First, quality options, which are pretty self-explanatory. Inside firearm options, you can choose if your controllers disappear when you pick something up, as well as turn on bullet trails and change how long they last.
and simulation options, you can change how the game simulates some of the physics. These options allow for a different amount of gravity on physics objects in the world, or even affect the ballistics model. Additionally, there is an option for how long spent casings stay on the ground. Movement options. This is an important one to change exactly how you want to move inside the game. Most of these movement styles can, will be activated by pressing the menu button, which changes the trackpad from doing firearm interactions to doing movement. If you have an analog stick and a trackpad on your controller, like on an Index or Windows Mixed Reality, the analog stick will almost always be bound to movement. There are general options, which allow you to change what the extra buttons on the Index and Rift do, something like Snap Turn or even Jump, and you can even change the angle of how much a snap turn moves. Teleport to point is pretty self-explanatory. Here is where you'll want to use the menu button to activate your movement style. Pressing the menu button will allow you to point towards where you want to teleport. You can choose between what they call a front-facing teleport, which allows you to choose which direction you'll be facing when you finish the teleport, as well as a standard teleport. Additionally, there are options to choose where the teleport comes from, your controller, or from which way you're facing. Dash movement style is pretty similar to teleport, except it is a quick linear movement instead of a blink. It similarly has an option for head or hand origin. There is robo recall mode, which is a lot like standard teleport, except instead of a single button, you use the trackpad. This allows you to choose which way you're gonna face when you finish the teleport. Slide a linear point to point is like dash, but very slow. There's Arm Swinger, which allows you to hold down the menu button and move your controller, and your speed will be determined by how fast you move. Classic Wind Stick, which allows you to move on one controller and snap turn on the other. In Smooth Movement Options, you have settings that affect Twin Stick, Arm Swinger, and Single Touchpad Movement. Here you can change the speeds at which you move, how to activate sprint, and even what axes determine forward. The orbs you see on your controllers are the interaction spheres. These are the points where you'll interact with objects. The color of the sphere changes when it is touching an interactive object. There are two spheres on your controller. They each represent the two places you can grab something, with the trigger or with the grip button. Once you are holding an object, the trackpad usually offers different ways of manipulating it. Try different directions on the trackpad to test it out. It will do things like open matchbooks, ignite the lighter, and all kinds of things on firearms, which we will get to later. You can pick up objects from a distance by pushing in the trackpad while not holding anything. This will shoot out a beam that will turn blue when intersecting an object you can pick up. Pull the trigger to grab it. Additionally, there is another option for a Half-Life Alex gravity gloves type of ranged grab. Use this if you prefer that style. You point at an object, pull the trigger, and flick it towards you and grab. Depending on your controller, inserting magazines into firearms can be tricky based on the build of your real-life controllers bumping into one another. Try the alternate magazine pose option to see if that helps. On the Vive, due to it not being comfortable to continually hold down the grip button, firearms will stick to your hand once you've picked them up. Then you can change options on how exactly to drop them, holding the grip button, double tapping it, etc. If you're having trouble with dropping your weapons a lot on other controller types, or just want to give your fingers a rest, you can force the Vive style of drop mode on other controllers in the options. Unlike some games that fudge the insertion of magazines and firearms, H3VR has a physics-based system which requires you to be a little bit more precise. But if you're having trouble, you can turn on an easy mag loading option that makes it a little easier on you. There are certain things you can climb in the game, like ladders or ropes. When you hover over them, they will highlight blue. Grab with the trigger or the grip on other controllers. Now moving your controller lifts you around the world. Alternate grabbing with the controllers to climb. You can even gain momentum from a swing off of a climbable object. This allows you to fling yourself up walls with enough practice. Here we'll go over some of the basic firearm interactions. 
Pick up the magazine and insert it into the bottom of the firearm. At this point, it still won't fire. You need to rack the slide on this pistol to pull around from the magazine and into the chamber. Now, you'll be able to fire. If your pistol isn't firing, try disengaging the safety. Some firearms have a safety on by default. With pistols, the safety is up on the trackpad. However, for most long guns, it is left on the trackpad. Once your firearm is empty, pressing down on the trackpad will eject the magazine on most firearms. Once you've inserted a new magazine, the slide is locked back, so pull back on it to release it. You are now ready to fire again. There are some more complicated interactions you can do on some pistols, such as engaging the slide lock. Pressing left and sliding up on the trackpad will lock the slide, if you have it pulled back. Similarly, if the slide is locked, press left and slide down to release the slide without having to pull on it with the other hand. Slides can also be released by physics force, so try jamming the slide on a table or even another gun. Another important aspect of H3VR is the quick belt. If you look down, you can see some circles around your chest and waist. This is the quick belt. When you are over a pocket, it will light up as well as buzz your controller. Some larger objects require to be placed into a slot of a certain size. Additionally, there are slots on either shoulder. You will feel a buzz of your controller when you are over them. In the quick belt options, you can change the quick belt arrangement. These have different sizes and arrangement of the pockets. Spawn locking is a useful feature to give yourself infinite ammo. To do so, place your ammo into a pocket, then hover the interaction sphere over that pocket. Press in the trackpad to activate the spawn lock. This will turn the pocket blue. Now you can pull infinite magazines from that pocket. Press the trackpad when hovering over it again to disable it. Not all items can be spawn locked, mostly just ammunition, but there's some others that can, so try it out. If you try to spawn lock a weapon, it will instead harness it. This will turn the pocket green. This means if you let go of your weapon, it will return to its pocket. Perfect for when you need to quickly change weapons. You can also holster items that are in pockets over your shoulder. In some modes, it'll be nice to hold more than what your quick belt gives you. This is where the backpack comes in. The backpack can be placed into a special slot that's located at the base of the back of your neck. You can see the slot it goes in if you look down all the way. You can also harness the backpack like a weapon. The backpack itself has several pockets of different sizes, and you can spawn lock and holster items in those as well. Now for some ammo manipulation. Press up on the trackpad while holding a magazine to eject a single round. Pick up a round with the trigger, then hold down on the touchpad. While doing this and you touch another round, it will pick up multiple. The amount that you can carry at once changes depending on the ammo type itself. You can put these into a single pocket and spawn lock them as well. This is useful for weapons that don't have external and removable magazines. Then you can load these rounds back into a magazine. Simply hold the round to the top of the magazine to load it. To drop a single round while holding more than one, press up on the trackpad. This is the ammo panel. It is available in some scenes and inside the spawn panel. With this, you can view and spawn all ammo types and variants. If you haven't memorized every bullet in the game, click Select Held Type to go to the ammo type of the object you are holding. You can view all sub-variants of this ammo type, and then you can select a single round or fill the magazine of whatever you're holding. 
Some ammo types, such as 12 gauge, have lots of subvariants with different effects. Load into a scene and try them out to learn more about them. Turning on bullet trails can also help a lot with this. Though you might learn more by shooting them at enemies. Attachments are found in some game modes and in the spawn menu. Some attachments are weapon specific, but most are for the Picatinny rail system that many weapons in the game have. Pick up the attachment and slide it onto the rail of the weapon and let go to attach. If you grab the attachment again, you can interact with it by using the touchpad. Left and right on sights typically changes the zero distance of the reticle or the zoom level on some scopes. Up will often activate flashlights and laser sights. To take an attachment off, grab it, and then press and hold down on the touchpad to detach. You can attach foregrips and even launchers to your weapons. With all the rail adapters and attachments, you can make some pretty weird stuff. Suppressors are attachments that connect at the barrel, but they have to be screwed on first. Other barrel attachments, like barrel extenders, don't need to be screwed in first. And since you don't screw on barrel extensions, remove them like you do other attachments. Grab and hold down on the trackpad. Lots of Russian-made weapons have a different set of attachments. Look for the attach point on the side of the weapon. However, using an adapter, you can use standard Picatinny attachments on Russian weapons. Now, let's say you spent a long time kitting out a weapon to exactly how you like it. You can save this configuration in the vault. Access from the spawn panel in the top right, place your weapon on the platform, and then press scan to have it save your customized weapon. Keep in mind, some updates can break previously saved weapons. Now some general operation tips for the different classes of firearms. These won't tell you how to operate every weapon in the game, but what you will learn will help you handle most of the arsenal. There are still some fiddly little weapons with their own rules. All four directions on the trackpad do different things with the double action revolver. Left will release the cylinder, down will pull back the hammer, holding up will let you spin it, and right will turn it for an alternate loading pose, which is good for lefties. Double action means the trigger does two things. It will pull back the hammer and release it, so there is no need to pull it back yourself for every shot. Some revolvers will come with a speed loader, which can be spawn locked. It lets you quickly load a revolver without messing around with individual rounds. Then flick the cylinder shut. Once you have fired every round, release the cylinder with left on the trackpad, and there are two ways of ejecting spent casings. You can click the ejection rod located in front of the cylinder, or jerk it back sharply facing downwards and let gravity do the work. Revolvers are good weapons to use ammo palming that we talked about in part 7. This will keep you from having to load these guns one round at a time. Single action revolvers are a bit more complicated. Up on the trackpad will still let you spin, down still moves the hammer, but left on the trackpad will cycle the weapon in and out of half cocked mode. This mode will open a gate that allows you to reach the cylinder. You only have access to one chamber at a time, so you will need to use right on the trackpad to advance the cylinder. Hold around to the gate and advance the cylinder. To remove something from the cylinder, pull the trigger on the hand holding the weapon. Advance the cylinder with the right trackpad and continue. Another way to eject something from the cylinder is to interact with the end of the ejection lever 
at the end of the weapon. Click the trigger to eject. Now, single action revolvers require you to pull back the hammer yourself for every shot. You can do this with the trackpad, or you can swipe your other hand over the hammer and it will lower it. Doing this, you can do fan firing. This is where you hold down the trigger and move your other hand quickly over the hammer to fire as fast as you can. Press up on the trackpad to release the latch. Place the shells inside, close it back up, and you're ready to fire. Spent shells are ejected automatically. Feed shells into the tube, usually from a gate on the bottom of the firearm, to pump it, grab the fore, and pull it towards you. Now the weapon is ready to fire. The pump will lock and not cycle if it has already been charged. To unlock it and force a cycle, hold up on the trackpad with the controller holding the grip. Some pump action shotguns can be slammed fire. This is where you hold down the trigger on the weapon and pump it to fire. To load the weapon, either put rounds into the loading gate, typically found on the side, or through the open gate on the back when the lever has been opened. To operate the lever, grab the fore and pull either hand towards one another. If you're on the Vive, you'll need to pull the trigger on the controller holding the fore. There is no mag release on the touchpad for many rifles, and with the AK, you can grab the mag directly or use the physical latch to release your magazine. Cycle the fire selector with left on the touchpad so it is no longer on safe. This way the bolt can be pulled back completely so that the weapon is ready to fire. Guns can have their charging handles in a lot of different places. Look around for it, remember the interaction sphere will change color when you're near something you can grab. On this weapon, it's on the back. When a magazine has been emptied and you insert a new, the bolt is held back. You can use the charging handle again to release it, or on some AR pattern weapons, among others, there is a bolt release. Some can be released with up on the trackpad, or by simply touching the release on the side with your controller. No need to press to interact. On an MP5, you can slap the charging handle back down with an open hand, no buttons required. Some weapons in the game have a bipod. Click to engage it. Then, you can set the bipod down on a surface. It will stick to the surface, and it will stabilize your aim. To move a bolt on the weapon, grab it and pull it up and back. You will have to do this between each shot. Make sure the safety is off via left on the trackpad. These rifles can have removable magazines, internal magazines you will have to fill one round at a time, or via stripper clips. Grab a stripper clip, place it in the firearm, grab the topmost round, pull downwards to load. Additionally, while you have the weapon held with both hands, you can hold right on the trackpad to manipulate the bolt without having to remove your hand from the rifle. Hold right and rotate the controller back and forward to move the bolt. This can take some practice. Grab the back of the weapon around here and pull up. Attach the box to the weapon and then grab the belt. Pull it over the top as far as you can. Put the top back down and then pull the charging handle. Cycle the fire selector with left on the trackpad if your weapon has one. Feed a rocket into the rear of the launcher, grab both grips, and pull the trigger to fire. RPG-7 works a little bit differently. Load the weapon from the front, grab both grips. The fore grip on this one has the trigger. Push down on the trackpad to pull the hammer. There are many different types of grenade launchers. 
some that use revolver-like cylinders, and even pump loading mechanics. This one is break action, so press up on the trackpad to open it, place a grenade in, close it, and trigger to fire. Caseless grenade launchers work a little bit differently. They load from the front. You can eject around from the barrel by interacting with this little switch here. Otherwise, it is the same. Though, there will be no case left to discard. You are ready to reload. Though most of the weapons in the arsenal are pretty standard, some firearms defy standards and will have to be interacted in a unique way. If the standard interactions aren't working, you may have to try something else. Like with the vector, the safety is on the trackpad. However, the fire selector is separate and must be clicked on its own to change the fire rate. There are a few different weapons in H3VR that are like this. Alright everyone, that is all I have put into this video. I'm sorry about the quality. This is my first video that I've ever edited. Uh, the first time I've recorded and scripted voiceover. Uh, I know it's probably pretty stilted. Um, let me know what you think I should cover next. If you think, if there's some things about the game that you'd like to know more about or things I should cover for other people looking for tutorials. Let me know if there's anything that I forgot that is pretty fundamental that you think I should add. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for watching if you've made it all this way. Uh, I hope this helped you figure out how to play this game. I think it's a really good game. And I know that it can be hard to get into right off the bat because it is so mechanically dense. And I just hope this makes it a little bit easier for people to get into it. So uh, thanks again, and uh, have fun in the game.